In this video, I'll be covering the Wahoo Kicker 5 Direct Drive Smart Trainer and bringing you up to speed with where things are at with the latest firmware updates, the updated axle adapters, some results of a number of Llama lab tests, and I'll touch on that question, Kicker 5 versus Kicker Core, which one to go with? Which is quite a popular question that's popping up in the forums at the moment. A quick refresher on the Kicker 5, it was released back in August 2020 and it's Wahoo's flagship Direct Drive Smart Trainer. They also have the Snap, the Core, the Kicker bike, and they've got something else on the horizon. The Kicker 5 has a larger flywheel than the Kicker Core, the Kicker 17 and previous models, with the Kicker 5 and the Kicker 18 having a 16 pound 7.25 kilo flywheel. The Kicker 5 has auto calibration capabilities, so there's no need to do continual spin downs on a regular basis. It comes with the Kicker Axis feet, which is said to give it a little bit more tilt side to side. In my experience, that doesn't do a lot, but it adds more grip on hard surfaces for that trainer. And the Kicker 5 also supports the Direct Connect module for connecting your trainer to your home network, eliminating the need to use Ant or Bluetooth connections on supported platforms. The other important attributes of the Kicker 5 is that it has plus or minus 1% power accuracy claimed by Wahoo, maximum power of 2200 watts, 20% gradient simulation, and has a pivoting rear axle, meaning it supports the Kicker Climb, obviously, and the new Elite Riser. Okay, with that summary out of the way, it's on to what's new with the Kicker 5, starting off with the firmware updates since launch. There's been quite a few of these. I've picked out the important ones. As of January 2021, they released a firmware that does support the Wahoo Direct Connect adapter. That hardware support wasn't there out of the box. The adapter came along a few months later. So if you do buy the adapter to plug it into your ethernet network, you will need the updated firmware on your Kicker 5. They rolled out true FTMS support for Bluetooth. That also went out to the Kicker Core and Kicker 18 recently. They've addressed an issue that I encountered upon launch or just a week before launch actually with the Kicker 5. And that was that the power was reading too high with really low flywheel speeds. Follow-up tests indicated they nailed that down pretty well. So happy with that. And just the other week, they've released what I call the anti-Christmas update. They've stopped the lights from flashing when the unit isn't in use. The update here, they call it the LED sleep mode, where the kicker LEDs will turn off after 15 minutes of inactivity. Any flywheel movement or active Bluetooth connection will reactivate the LEDs. The kicker core and the kicker 18 also got that update. Whilst it was only minor, it actually is a quite an important one here for the Llama Lab. This room is very, very dark at night. If the Kicker 5 is plugged in, the whole room glows with those LEDs. So after 15 minutes of not using it, those lights shut off. Now onto the updated axle adapters that Wahoo have released for their Kicker units. They're these right here. And Wahoo state that in late 2020, several bike manufacturers updated the frames on a few bike models that resulted in them being incompatible with our 2017 through to current Kicker and all versions of the Kicker Core. Working closely with bicycle companies, Wahoo has developed a new set of adapters allowing the affected bicycles to be used with the above mentioned Wahoo trainers. The bikes affected there, there's a few Treks, there's the giant TCR Advance Pro from 2021, there's the Lauf True Grit and all Cervelo disc frames, which I am the owner of one. The replacement parts there, one, two, and three, are a little more tapered than the original parts below. I do believe all kickers and kicker cores are shipping with these updated adapters. If your kicker doesn't have these and you need them, feel free to contact Wahoo or your local bike shop to help you out. Now onto some Llama lab test results with the Kicker 5, putting it up against some pretty well-known power meters on the bike. Now this year alone, I've done 59 power meter comparison tests with the Kicker 5 unit that I have. It's held up very, very well and been a very reliable baseline to compare other meters to. Now it's not to say it's perfect, and I have on occasion done an advanced factory spin down, which involves jumping through a few hoops. If you're probably asking, why does a trainer that has auto calibration need a spin down performed? Well, technically it doesn't. And if you're thinking that your Kicker 5 needs one of these spin downs, it probably doesn't either. I'd strongly recommend putting the acid on your power meter on your bike, checking and double checking that before going through the procedure of doing an advanced spin down on a Kicker 5. Having said that, if you wanna do one, I get the best results from doing an advanced spin down after about 10 minutes of easy riding and then doing the spin down, rather than doing 10 minutes of white hot hardcore warm up and then doing the spin down. However, that aside, let's look at the results. Yes, here we are, my favorite website on the internet, the DCR Analyzer Tool, where we can compare multiple power meters as an overlay, see how they stack up, and pretty much call it a day. Okay, I'll go into the details, but they are pretty good here. Uh, a few dropouts in, on this day in the Llama Lab, but we'll skip over where things weren't working. Um, I put that down to external factors, but when things are clean, 228, 229, 230 with a steady state and the sprint. It's happy, happy days. Remembering that Wahoo do factor in a small amount of drivetrain loss into their calculations, so 
That's what we expect from the Kicker 5. Absolutely beautiful. This is three seconds smoothed, but we're not chopping off too much. Uh, looking into the sprint, that's all looking pretty good there. There's going to be a slight discrepancy straight away with the snap, uh, and then yeah, everything else looks really, really good. Into the overs and unders with the 150, 350, 150, and 450 zones. Um, all is behaving there as expected. And just given the data itself just ramps up and holds, indicates the Kicker 5 can hold those erg zones very, very well. From here, we have the flywheel speed test, which is designed for trainers to fail. Uh, did the Kicker 5 fail? It did okay. The flywheel speed test involves me setting the trainer to 225 watts for four and a half minutes. And every 90 seconds, I change the flywheel speed. So we start off at a low flywheel speed. And then at the end, it is absolutely smoking along. Most trainers fail the last block. The kicker five, you can see here the first two blocks, no problems, no problems. When the flywheel's up at around 60 kilometers per hour, really humming along in the 5311 or the 5312, it's dropping down in power, so it's not correctly reporting the power as we're seeing from the AXO and the Asioma Duo Shees. It's a few watts off there, but that's kind of to be expected. This test is designed for trainers to fail. This one's done okay. And finally, two short punches on the pedals, uh, simulating maybe a race attack, or not quite a final sprint, but a final surge. And the numbers there aren't too bad at all. Compared to what I've seen lately with other power meters, that's looking pretty good to me. Like other model trainers, the Kicker 5 will do a cadence estimation and the results that I'm getting aren't too bad. They're usually plus or minus one, two or three RPM. And you can see through the steady state section here, it goes from a little bit under to a little bit over and it's pretty close. In the short, sharp uh, overs and unders, it changes a little bit, but again, it's still within ballpark. A cadence sensor on the crank arms is probably a better option to go with if you want absolute accuracy of those RPMs. But what I get out of these trainers isn't too bad. It's good enough for me to use. Everything was pretty much in agreement with the mean max power graph, so I was happy to see that. And finally, the overall stats there. Now, forget the average power and weighted power. I had a few dropouts in the Llama Lab that day, but max powers were after for this one. 1168, 1148, 1151 in the maximal sprint. That's pretty close. On to Llama Lab test number two. It's the Kicker 5 up against the Power to Max NGCO back in February. Everything's looking, again, pretty good. Same story with the 200 watts, 250 watts into the sprint. Um, Happy, happy days there within one watt there. Overs and unders, again, looking pretty good. Kicker having that ability to hold those watts right where you need it. Flywheel speed test, same as before. First two blocks, pretty good. Last block, under-reporting a little bit, but that's what we've come to expect for my very strict testing. And a few short, hard accelerations, simulating just some race attacks. Um, one was out of the saddle, then back in, so we have some power sort of stabilization happening there. And a little bit off in that acceleration there, but it's coming together right at the top there. So I need to go a little bit harder for a little bit longer for those tests. But overall, not too bad up in the 850 watt range there. The cadence estimation from the Kicker 5 lines up pretty well with the Power to Max NGCO. If I was a betting man, probably go with the Power to Max NGCO on this one though. The mean max power graph again makes me happy. All looks pretty good there. Loading up the final stats table here and one power meter I will keep hidden. Uh, 190, 192, 195, 230, 231, 233 on weighted power and the max power, all very, very close for this Llama Lab test. 1237, 1225, 1232. That's actually really, really good. As you saw there, some great numbers coming out of the Kicker 5 and one of the reasons it remains in high rotation in the Llama Lab to compare other power meters to. Now, onto the question that comes up more than Kicker versus Neo these days, and it is Kicker versus Kicker Core. Which one should you go with? Well, I've made your life easy. I've summarized it in a table that I call Kicker 5 versus Kicker Core. Sheepy, why didn't we come up with something better than that? I'm on holiday. Oh. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you enjoy that holiday, mate. Okay, so the flywheel on the Kicker 5, 7.25 kilos, a little bit heavier than the Kicker Core at 5.4 kilos. Can you tell the difference? Well, if I'm using the Kicker 5 today and the Kicker Core tomorrow, no, I probably have to use one next to the other and switch between them to really know there's not a lot in that. However, I do lean towards a heavier flywheel. It has to be better, doesn't it? Really not much in it though. The Kicker 5 with the gradient, the max power and the power accuracy definitely packs a punch over the Kicker Core. Coming in at only 16% gradient on the Core, 1800 max watts and plus or minus 2% power accuracy. The Kicker 5 has that magic auto calibration and doesn't rely on the regular spin downs like the Kicker Core. Kicker 5 comes with a cassette in the box. Kicker Core, no cassette. Connectivity wise, the Kicker 5 has the edge with the direct connect port. 
Kicker 5 has height adjustment and feet leveling if you need those. The Kicker Core, well, doesn't have either of those. Kicker 5 has a handle and has folding legs. The Kicker Core has a folding frame, but it's quite awkward to move around. So even though it's a little bit lighter, it's still a bit clumsy to move around. And of course, there's the pricing difference between the two, with the Kicker 5 being a few hundred dollars more than the Kicker Core. I won't list the prices here because they're different depending where you are in the world, but you are paying a premium for the flagship product. So it all comes down to the question, which one is best? Well, it depends. The Kicker Core is a very, very popular unit. It will suit a lot of riders and there are a lot of happy Kicker Core owners out there. However, for me, for what I do, I do need that plus or minus 1%. I do like that heavier flywheel, even though I really can't tell if it's there or not. And when Zwift finally get around to supporting that Direct Connect port, I'll be using that exclusively for my data collection from the Kicker 5 for my Llama Lab tests. It will get rid of all my dropout issues. So for me, it is the Kicker 5 over the Kicker Core, but I'm not the average use case either. Okay, wrapping this one up for today, there we have it. You're now up to speed with the Wahoo Kicker 5 or Kicker 2020 as of late 2021. Will we see any updates to the existing trainers from Wahoo in the upcoming winter season? I don't think so. Eurobike was a few months ago. We saw nothing from them there. So they missed that boat of having something out this winter season. But we've spotted something on the horizon though. Hmm, stay tuned for that one. Thanks for watching.